I just wish I'd been able to find out more while I was up there. Oh, Tommy did fine. It wasn't easy, you know. He didn't want to rouse suspicions. No, not if I could help it. That housekeeper, Hester, is very suspicious. And she's very tight-lipped about everything. Mm -hmm. I remember her being very closed off, almost offensive. Mm -hmm. yeah. And grim. Oh, she's really something. Mm -hmm. You couldn't get her to tell, her, tell you any more about her brother, Martin Blake, right? No, just what I told you, that uh, they had a big falling out right after he ran off with uh, Ruth Hadley, and they haven't communicated since. Mm -hmm. Or so she says. Mm -hmm. There wasn't any indication of it that they, maybe they had been in touch at all. Anything that might have said that. No, no, Hester doesn't leave things lying around. Well, you know, an address, a, a postcard or something, a, a personal phone director. Hmm. If Hester Pierce has anything personal, she makes sure nobody else knows about it. I see. Everything up there is kept under lock and key. Well, she even locks her room every time she leaves it. I know, I tried it several times. All the storage closets are locked. And Bennett's as adamant about his privacy as Hester. I wish Lisa wasn't up there away from everyone she knows. I know what you mean, Grant, but there's nothing anybody can do. She's really in love with Bennett. What do you think of him this time around, Tom? I mean, this is the first time you see him on his home ground. Well, I was a little surprised at first. How so? Well, he was completely different. I mean, he was warm and relaxed. The complete opposite of the way he was in uh, Oakdale. Yeah, he was a marvelous host. Couldn't do enough for me. He even asked me to be the best man at the wedding. Really? Yeah. And I, I couldn't help genuinely liking him at first. And then what? Well, the next morning we had breakfast together and Bennett was in marvelous spirits. And then Mom and I went sightseeing and to town to have lunch. You know how Mom is. She was anxious to show me everything. The country is beautiful up there. Oh, yes, it is, yeah. Well, Bennett stayed home. He, he writes several hours every day. Mm -hmm. And when we came back, he was his old, moody self again. He hardly talked. He kept pretty much to himself until the day I left. He stayed mostly in his room, working on his novel. Which, by the way, Derek Bickford thinks is a fine piece of work. Well, who's Derek Bickford? Oh, he's a nice guy from New York in the publishing business. He's uh, visiting his uncle, who's a close friend of uh, Bennett's. Oh, yes, the doctor Lisa spoke of, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Also a nice guy. Well, anyway, Mom sneaked the first two chapters of Bennett's book to Derek. And Bennett's been adamant about nobody seeing a page of that book. Why? Who knows? Mom says he says it's very private. Well, Derek... Uh, was very impressed. As a matter of fact, he's staying up in Norwich in the hopes of reading the whole thing and grabbing it for his publishing company. Well, it's good to hear that Bennett has talent as an author. Yeah. And he seems very disciplined about his work, too. Oh, well, that's good. Yes, I'm also glad about, about Derek Bickford, too. At least Lisa has a friend up there. Yes, I am, too. They seem to get along very well together. Yeah. You know, just in case something should happen. Well, I tell you, I really hated leaving her there. I mean, the place is charming, but gives me the creeps. The whole time I was there, I felt as though I were being watched. Oh? Yes. Mom feels the same thing. I, mean, I know it sounds ridiculous, but the atmosphere of the place just makes you imagine all kinds of things. Well, I, knowing Lisa's imagination, I'm sure she was working at overtime. Yeah, she told me once that... Uh, well, she had the feeling that Bennett's first wife, Ruth, was still there, wandering the halls at night, watching every move she makes. And she, she thought she heard a woman crying at night, sobbing somewhere in the attic or in an upstairs room Mom's never seen. Good morning. Oh, it's so good to have you here at last. <laughs> I'm so glad to be here. 
Mm, wonderful just now waking up and seeing your face. Mm -hmm. Feeling your warmth beside me. Mm -hmm. I've been awake for a long time. Have you? Yes, I have. <clears throat> I've been looking at you, watching you sleep. <laughs> I love you so much. No, I love you. Oh, sorry, I lost my temper last night. I got so angry. Oh, it's all right. Let's not even talk about last night, okay? Well, it's just no way to justify getting angry at you. <laughs> Oh. I do want you to know that, that that trust is important to me in our relationship. Well, I know it's important to me, too. I know that now. And you understand why it... Well, why I, I took those chapters from your book. I won't ever do that again, I promise you. But you must promise me something. You must promise that you're going to let Derek finish reading your novel when you're through writing it. Okay? We'll see. That may be some time off. Yeah, uh, you've been writing a lot recently, and I know that he loves what he's read so far. Yeah, that's what he says at any rate. Well, that's true. It's what he told me, and I knew he'd like it, and he really, really does. And besides, he's going to take it to his publisher, and it's going to be published. They're going to insist on it. Yeah, I'm going to talk about my book now. Got me on up there, just a little, huh? Mm. No, I want to talk about how much I'm in love with you. I'm completely happy I'll be when you're my wife. <laughs> you know something last night? You were really angry with me. And yet, as angry as you were, there's such a sensitivity about you. And then you swept me up in your arms and you carried me off to your room. You are strong, man. Did you do that? You are really strong. And as strong as you are, you're so gentle. I think that's one of the things I love about you the most is how gentle you are. Oh, I'm going to be a good wife to you. I know you are. And I'm going to see to it that you're going to forget all the hurt that Ruth left with you. You're doing that already. Mm. Already she's just a, an unhappy memory. I don't want you to ever be unhappy again. After you, my wife, her memory will disappear forever, and, and, and your love will replace all that hurt. You know, I may have a lead. I found a pad <clears throat> in the sitting room at the inn, right next to the phone. Now, somebody wrote a message on the top sheet and then tore that sheet off. But the impression came through, and when I rubbed a pencil across it, you could read the message. More Cliff Sanitarium. Doctors, uh, Karanofsky? Karanofsky. Uh-huh. Now, I compared the handwriting to a grocery list of Hester's. Now, I'm no expert, but I'd swear the samples matched. You know, this may be the place where she was a mental patient. And Dr. Kalinowski could have been her doctor. Yeah. Look, I, I, I want to keep this, uh, Tom, if I may, and give it to Lieutenant Lewis, see what he can find out, all right? Sure. Okay. Uh, all right, Lisa is going to still be married. What, did the wedding still plan for December? Yeah, early December. And there's no uh, chance you feel that you, the marriage might be called off, that you change your mind? No chance at all. What's the matter, Grant? Well, Tom, Lieutenant Lewis is looking into some things for me, and... Uh, well, they may be completely out of line, I, I don't know. In fact, I... Uh, I just really wish that Lieutenant Lewis could turn up some information that would prove me dead wrong and that my imagination was working overtime too because Lisa has moved to the Willows. Hi there. Hi. Oh, 
was just gonna wake you up. I was, didn't want you to miss your first class. No, I've got plenty of time. Do I smell coffee? Mm-hmm, there's a whole pot. Help yourself. What time did you get in last night? Late. I didn't even hear you. Oh, there's some great rye bread in there if you'd like some toast. No, coffee's just fine. I didn't realize Tom's flight got in so late. Oh, it didn't. We stayed out late talking after I picked him up at the airport. Did you go to Wranglers? No, we went to a new place called Copperfields. Good morning, Mrs. Coleman. Oh, Hester. I trust your son got off safely? Yes, yes. On time, thank you. I'm going up to do that room now. Uh -huh. I want to strip the bed and wash the sheets and towels. The room will need a good going over, too. Vacuuming, yeah. dusting. It always makes for a lot of extra work, having guests. Oh. Well, uh, you certainly are going to have to get used to uh, having a lot of extra guests, because I plan to have... Uh... A lot of people from Oakdale coming up. Well, as I understood it, the wedding guests will all be staying at the old Colonial Inn. Oh, oh no, I, I'm not talking about the wedding. I'm talking about long before that. My friends are coming up before. I see. Uh, look, Hester, if, if you don't really like the idea, I can always uh, bring in other help to help you out. No. Well, I'm sorry, you were just complaining. I don't need anyone to help me. Well, all right. It's just trying to suggest. Well, Bennett wouldn't like the idea either. Oh, don't be ridiculous. He doesn't like the idea of outsiders poking around here. <laughs> That's really silly. There'll be a lot of people around here once we get the place fixed up. We're going to have lots of guests here at the inn. Oh, my goodness, I've got more redecorating I have to do. We've got the guest rooms. They're all going to have to be painted. I think maybe some of them will be papered, too. And we're going to have to just completely modernize all of the, well, all, all of the facilities around here, the plumbing and everything. And, oh, you know, I would like to have um, some beautiful doors, French doors, going out to the patio. You know where the flagstones are? I thought they'd be a lovely place for us to have uh, lunch in the summertime. Don't you think that's a good idea? I don't know much about decorating. Well, maybe it would sort of please you if you uh, knew that I do have plans also to modernize the kitchen. I think I'll even uh, modernize the cellar. The cellar? Mm hmm Oh, please, don't say anything to Bennett about this. I want this to be a surprise for him. But he's a man who really does enjoy his wine, and I was thinking it would be so nice just to completely revamp that entire cellar, just totally redo it. And I will have a uh, thermostatically controlled in one place, and then maybe in another little section I'll have a cocktail lounge. That would be nice. We could call it the wine cellar. <laughs> oh, how charming that would be. <laughs> oh, these guests you're talking about having up, when might they be coming? Well, I don't know. I would like for my dearest friend, Ken, Kim Stewart, to come up and you know something, you just gave me an idea. I think I'll give her a call now. I'm going to pin her down to a date. Well, Kim, I'm so glad to know that there wasn't really an emergency at home when you got there. No, no, everything was all right. Uh, actually, the boys were gone by the time I got home, and Betsy apologized for not having asked for permission for them to come over. I think children that age often do things without thinking. Mm. John did have reason for concern. Uh, mind you, not that I think that four kids dancing constitutes having a wild party. Well, no. It's just it was the drinking. Now, I did explain to her it was absolutely wrong for her to have those boys drinking in our home and any of her friends as far as that's concerned. Oh, I think it's very difficult bringing up teenagers, especially in this day and age. But Betsy is a responsible young lady. Mm, I think so. How is she doing in school? Well, much better. And as I said, you know, she really is taking an interest in things now. I think uh, partly because of this new friend of hers, yeah. Lois. Mm -hmm. Seems to be a very nice girl. <laughs> the two of them are helping me plan Andy's birthday party. Oh, dear. Andy will be three, yeah, won't right. he? Mm -hmm. Are you giving a big party for him? Well, you know, his friends and uh, Franny, of course. Yeah. Cake and ice cream. 
Oh, Kim, there's someone you might think about inviting. Uh, Doug and Marsh Gamble's little boy. Yeah. I don't know how many children he's had a chance to know here since he's moved to Oakdale, but Brian's an awfully nice child. Oh, too. that's a very good idea. I'll call Marsha. What, what is he, about three years old? Good morning, Wade Bookstore. Oh, hi, Mrs. Coleman. Yeah, I'm fine. Yet you'll be happy to know that uh, Judy says that the inventory was completed in record time. Oh, yes, Kim's here. Just a minute, I'll put her on. Excuse me, sounds like Lisa. <laughs> Lisa, hi. Kim, I have just come to the conclusion you need a vacation. <laughs> what are you talking about? I haven't been working long enough to earn a vacation. Oh, yes, you have. I'm the boss, and I know. <laughs> Truly, have you given any more thought to coming up here? Well, well, honey, I really haven't had a chance to. You know, I would love to come and see you, but I'd have to arrange with Ellen to have the children come and stay with her, and I, I just think that it's best if I wait until the wedding. Oh, please, don't wait that long. I don't think I can stand to wait that long before I see you. Um, look, it would mean so much for me if you could just come up here and get to know Bennett the way Tom did, and I want you to understand why I love Bennett so much. So do you think maybe you could come towards the end of the week? Or the um, first of next? Lisa. I tell you what, I'll, I'll talk to Ellen, and I'll get back to you, okay? Wonderful. <laughs> Nancy's here. She wants to say hello. Nancy? Hi, how are you? Oh, what? how's Chris? How's everyone? What are you doing here, Hester? I thought I gave you the morning off. Yeah, well, um, oh, I know. I was so delighted that Tom could come up, too. I just wish he could have stayed longer. If I were you, I'd be more concerned about your fiancé. Mm -hmm. She just announced that she's having several of her friends up here nosing around before the wedding. What? Well, I know, but you know, he felt he had to get back. He had work to do. She just invited a Mrs. Stewart. Yes. I can't help wondering where it'll all end, Bennett. Well, look, Nancy, what about you? I would love it if you could come up soon. And, oh, bring Chris, please. Frank Manhauser used to be a client at the firm. You remember him? Oh, yes, I remember him. Sure, he, he moved to Milwaukee, didn't he? Yes, that's right. Yes. Well, he'd like to have me come up there to discuss a very complicated criminal neglect charge that's being brought against his firm. Mm -hmm. Now, he has good legal counsel there. He just wants some outside advice. But the trouble is I'm going to be in court for the next three days. He's in court. I'd like to ask what your calendar is for this time. Well, let me take a look. Good. Mm. Okay. I have a consultation with the ward case uh, for tomorrow, but I mean, that can be postponed. Uh, well, of course, there's nothing really pressing. I really would prefer you to go up there and represent our firm. Be glad to handle it. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Am I interrupting anything? Nancy. Oh, Nancy. 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 no, come in. <laughs> Mary said that I could find all of you back here. Yeah. Tom, welcome home, dear. Thank mm. you. I was going to call you later, Grandma, and tell you all about my trip. Well, I've just talked to your mother, and she went on and on about how much your visit meant to her. I gather you had an awfully good time. Yeah, I had a very pleasant time, but uh, that place kind of gives me the creeps. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Lisa's always described the inn as being so very old and so very charming. Well, I hope soon to be able to make my own evaluation of it. Oh, by the way, in case you don't know it, your father may be flying in from London tomorrow. Nancy, I think it's about time that we went out to lunch. My oh, wife is taking me to lunch today. Uh -huh. And come on. Hey, well, enjoy yourself. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. We'll see you later. All right. Tom, can you stay for a moment? Mm -hmm. Uh, I'd like you to do some long-distance sleuthing for us. Uh -huh. Norwich? Yeah. You're right about Dr. Bickford uh, not telling me anything, I'm sure of that. But he might be more open to his nephew. Lewis would like you to contact Derek, see if he can find out any more facts about... Uh, what was happening around the time of Ruth's disappearance, you know? Also to find out if uh, Hester said anything to Dr. Bickford about uh, Martin's whereabouts. Well, I'll do what I can. I, I just want to be careful about not causing Bennett to feel any more animosity towards Derek than he already does. Bennett doesn't like it. Well, Mom told me that she thinks he's a little jealous of Derek. Well, that figures. I'm afraid Bennett is going to be jealous of any man that crosses Lisa's path. And that is what worries me.
Hello? Anybody here? Lisa? Bennett? Hello? Anybody home? Dear Lisa, drop by in the hope of finding you here. But the old inn seems completely deserted. Should have called first. Before I get arrested for trespassing, or worse yet, meet Hester in a dark hallway, I'd better seal this and leave it for you. Please call me as soon as you can. I read something in the second chapter of Bennett's book that disturbs me slightly. Well, maybe there's an envelope. when I came in, but nobody answered. I was outside working. I have no idea where Hester is. Yeah, well, I must apologize for coming in, you know, like that, but I called out and the door was open, and as I said, yeah, it I was... know what you say. Why are you here? Well, I was out for a drive, and I thought I'd drop by and say hello. Thought maybe I might visit with Lisa a little bit if you were writing. She went out for a walk before lunch. Well, I wrote this uh, note for her, and if it's all right with you, I'll just leave it there on the desk. Fine. Uh, Derek, I was just wondering if you're uh, through reading the second uh, chapter of my novel. Uh, well, look, Bennett, I... Uh... Oh, look, I, I don't mean to put you on the spot. Lisa told me you have it. Well, I'm, I'm glad to get that out in the open. I, you know, I didn't like the idea of reading it behind your back any more than she did. But she was so anxious for me to take a look at it. She can be a little impulsive. Oh, that's another reason, by the way, that I have, I have the second chapter out in the car and I was going to give it to her today. Uh-huh. Why don't you go out and get it? I'll wait here. Okay. Uh, Derek? Yeah. You gonna leave your note? Huh. Oh, yeah. So do you have lots of ideas for Andy's birthday party? Yeah, I've got some, and we'll have to get your opinion on them. Okay, great. <laughs> you know, he loves anything that has to do with outer space these days. Oh, good. I had the same idea. <laughs> Just let me get my purse. Okay. Hello, Tom. Tom, I spoke to your mother this morning. I understand the two of you had a wonderful visit. Uh, yes, it was very nice. Hello, Tom. Hi, Sheila. Well, well I, I didn't expect to see you here. I came by to have lunch with Kim. As a matter of fact, we uh, probably should get going. I don't want to keep you away too long. I mean it, Kim. Don't rush. I'll be just fine. Judy's coming back soon. Talk to you later. Ah, uh, yeah, sure. Well, it's good to see you. I'm glad to see you, too. I suppose I shouldn't say it, but um, I missed you. Well, why shouldn't you say it? Oh, I don't know. I guess I don't want to seem uh, pushy. Well, here it is, the second chapter. Well taken care of and read with great interest. You don't have to say anything about this, Derek. Oh, I know I don't have to, but I want to. It's fascinating reading. Uh, really beautifully written. Thanks. Had a totally individual style, and the way the characters were drawn so clearly, I mean, I am so excited about this. That's good to hear. I am, uh, I am thankful for your interest. And uh, I hear that you're almost finished with it now. Yeah, it's coming along. 
When it is finished, you'll be the first to see it. Oh, well, good. Yeah, I'd like to look at the next few chapters, if I could. Uh, no, no. Uh, I'd rather you waited until the whole thing is complete than uh, read it all at once. Oh, very well. Let me tell you that if the rest of it is as good as that beginning, I can almost guarantee a good deal for my company. Well, maybe we can get together in the next uh, day or two. We'll see. Hello, Esther. Mr. Bickford. Uh, look, on uh, second thought, I, uh, I think I'll call Lisa and I'll take that note with me. Where is it? I was going to put it in Lisa's room. Oh, well, <laughs> thanks anyway. Well, bye again. Bye. doing in here? You didn't sleep with Doug because he's married and he's still living at home, and I won't sleep with Tom because I'm just not sure of my own feelings. I guess we are what we are, and wondering what would happen if we were something different is a complete waste of time. Absolutely. What's the matter with us? What? <laughs> we're sitting here like two lumps. We're young, we're bright, we're intelligent, and uh, we're too intelligent to feel blue over things that we can't change. You're right. Well, then let's pick ourselves up and get out of this. Well, sounds good. <laughs> what do you suggest? Well, what do we usually need when we feel blue? We need people, music, conversation. Sounds like a party. Yeah. Why don't we uh, throw an old-fashioned Halloween bash with hot spiced wine and jack-o'-lanterns and lots of laughter? Sounds good. I'll make a list. <laughs> ah, all ready to leave from Milwaukee? Yes, yes, Tom. I'm uh, taking a flight the first thing in the morning. Oh, you, you'll be hearing from uh, Lieutenant Lewis, I'm sure. Uh, I told him to keep in touch while I'm away. Good. Uh, did you get a hold of Derek Pickford yet? Yeah, I just got a hold of him. Uh, he was out at the inn when I tried to call him earlier. Oh, is he going to cooperate? He's going to find out all he can from his uncle and keep me posted. Okay. He also said that when he was out at the inn earlier, Mom was out taking a walk, but he talked to Bennett. Bennett said that he knew all about Mom giving him the first two chapters of his novel. Mm -hmm. Was Bennett upset about it? Evidently not. Derek was pleasantly surprised. So am I. <laughs> Miss Stewart oh. told me to come right in. Come in, yes, yes, I'm just leaving. Any news? I've located more Cliff Sanitarium for you. Well, where is it? In the very northwest corner of Wisconsin, miles from nowhere. What about Dr. Karnofsky? He's a head psychiatrist on the staff there. Okay, good, good. Look, look, if you can give me the address, then as soon as I finish my work in Milwaukee, I'll drive out there and see what I can find out. I'm not too happy about you going up there by yourself. Why don't I locate the authorities there and have them go with you? No, no, look, if, if there's anything wrong, if, if Hester is trying to conceal anything, I don't want, I don't want them alerted so they could, can, you know, cover their tracks or anything. Okay, but be careful. Well, how are you gonna get them to give you any information if you don't have the authorities along? Well, I'll, I'll be able to handle it, Tom. I, if you can just get me the address, Lieutenant. Okay, I wish you luck. But in a place that isolated, you're going to be completely on your own. <laughs> oh, today was such a beautiful day. It was gray and overcast all day. Oh, silly. I'm not talking about the actual weather. I'm saying the day was beautiful, as last night was beautiful. Mm. That was quite a long walk you took today. Yeah, it was. Did you miss me? Every minute. <laughs> Good. Oh, I walked and I thought about you and I thought how much I loved you. And then I thought about our inn and what we're going to do and how we're going to fix it up before the wedding and all kinds of things. What has to get? Well, I, no, I think maybe a bit. She's cooking our dinner. Let me get it this time. Hello? Lisa, Derek. Well, Derek, hello. Well, I was wondering when we were going to hear from you. Well, didn't Bennett tell you that I dropped by today? No, I guess he forgot. 
Well, I was going to leave a note for you, but uh, then I decided against it. Uh, I'd really like to see you tomorrow. Do you think it's possible? Oh, yes. I think that well, it would be fine. You'd drop by any time. We don't have any plans. Well, I, what I mentioned in the note was that I'd read something in the second chapter of Bennett's book that disturbed me slightly. Oh, what? Are you alone now? <laughs> no. Well, then I'd rather uh, not talk about it on the phone. Well, could you give me a little hint? Well, it has something to do with Ruth and what may actually have happened to her. I see. Well, I just can't wait to see you tomorrow and hear what you have to say, Derek.